Hello and welcome to Faith Matters. This is the show where we take a spiritual perspective on Merseyside life. And in the studio today, we have our guests, Claire, Tim and Sarah from the Why Kids charity. Claire, tell us a bit about Why Kids, how you got started, you know, what's it all about? Sure, Why Kids, um, we are a children's charity based in Bootle um, and we have a heart to see the transformation of Bootle, but also to see every child on the planet come to know Jesus. Um, so we have sort of a, a double vision, one about community and also about changing lives um, and young people come to know uh, the Lord. Uh, so it began way back actually as a voluntary organisation back in 1988. Uh, and then uh, my husband and I were called to Liverpool. We thought to church plant, but the moment we got here, God had other ideas. And uh, I was told to go ahead and set up Why Kids as a charity. Um, and in 2004, we got charitable status and we've, and God's just done amazing things since. We've grown and grown and grown. Um, we now have six different areas of operation, including schools work, uh, youth work and children's work, training. We have two social enterprises. Uh, we do lots of community work um, and, of course, faith. And we work with local churches and employ staff on for them, then help them to uh, grow and develop their youth and children's work. Okay, now that, that's a big vision that you're kind of rolling out there. Um, it is a big one, yeah. <laughs> who, who funds you? Well, we're funded from many different sources. Um, one, of the, one of our values has always been, though, when we came into Bootle, we didn't ask the local church to pay us to come. God told us to come. Um, and so we've never asked churches for money. If they give us money, that's great, but we've never asked for it. Um, we go to many different funders. Uh, we're trying to set up businesses to generate an income. Um, but I like very much the George Muller uh, yep, model. Yep, Bristol. Yep, Absolutely, yep. where he said, if you need money, you pray and you ask God to provide yep. it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, it's like Bono said, didn't he? You know, um, uh, God doesn't need any more money. Yeah, um, absolutely. That, or worse to that effect. Yeah. So, Tim, uh, you're a youth worker. Um, yep. The Christian ethos, you know, what, what does that mean for you? You're, you're a young person. You know, yep. young, young people interested in, in, in the Christian ethos? You know, what is it for you? Uh, I, I think, as you, as you can tell by the way Claire talks about how Wicked started, the, the Christian ethos has been a part of the fabric of Wicked from when it started and, um, and, and ever since. And even if we're not shouting about it, um, it's it's part of all the projects that we're, we're running out and we're doing. Um, but often we get the opportunity to shout about it as well. Um, so it might be that we're kind of working alongside churches, like Claire said, um, and, and kind of empowering them to be able to um, support their children's work. Or it might be that we're doing our own stuff. So we uh, run a cafe church in um, North Perk. And we also run Alpha and uh, lots, that, lots of other things. Alpha for Teenagers, youth is it? Alpha, yeah. Youth alpha. Yeah. 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 So there's just lots of different things, but even when we're not doing Christian work as such, you know, it's it's part of the fabric of why kids. It's kind of part of the who whole you thing. Are, really. yeah. 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 But you don't just work with Christian. Absolutely not. Young no. People. I mean, ninety percent of our work is community based. It's about being Christ in the community, not having to preach Him. Um, and. Uh, Every year we ask God to give us a, a word that, that, that is something we go by for the year. And very early on, he said to us, be church, not be a church. But for many young people we come across, they would never darken the doors of church. And their idea of God can be a bit strange or warped or irrelevant. And when they meet people and realise that they're Christians and they're actually normal and they love them and they care about them. And, and it isn't about bums on seats, not about no, converting, no. it's about actually loving and being the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. And we've often got that wrong, haven't we, that we, we talk about people going to church yeah. or, you know, attracting people to come to church where, where we just, when it really is about being church, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. That's what Jesus modelled for us. He yeah. just was who he was with his friends in the community and that's what he did so and that's what he caused us to follow and it's largely yeah, what we try to do in our in our community to 
to, to be the hands and feet to, and to love people. And if they then choose to attend a church or want to know more about Christianity, then great. And if they don't, they still know they're loved. And that's really important to us. Okay, Sarah, you, you do some family outreach work. Um, you're involved with the family ministry. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, I mean, Why Kids has always worked with not only the children, but the, the, the greater family. And they've realised that what they actually need to do is to, if we're going to teach uh, values to the children, maybe we should be teaching those same values to the, to the parents to show them what we're trying to achieve. So we've recently started, started a families group um, where the families come, um, you know, parents with the children and we do various activities with them. A lot of them are based around the, the family unit um, and keeping the family together, but also showing people different personalities within the family and how to cope with them. And um, one thing that I do is I do cooking with the families. I know we all find it difficult to get the kids to eat vegetables and different kinds of foods. And I try to show the families different ways to actually, you know, feed the children, not only on a budget, but, uh, you know, with a, with a healthy kick to it as well. well I mean, we've got some food here that you've bought. We have. It's not necessarily healthy though. In the, in, <laughs> oh, the in, strawberries, it's, it's fine. It's just very nice of you to bring it in the second half. I will be tucking into it. <laughs> okay. And, um, but before that, I just want to talk about Bootle. You know, why Bootle? Um, Why not the, the whole of the city? You know, what, what's this focus on people? Well, it's interesting because in the for twenty years, well, more than twenty years ago now, but uh, my husband and I felt very much called to Liverpool. It took us twenty years to get here, um, not through want of trying. And when we did get here, um, I began thinking, I know, Lord, you want me to start Y Kids, and you want me to start it in Liverpool. So I started going around looking at buildings in Liverpool, and is it here? Is it here? And and, and every time it was a no. And at the time I was working as a community worker in Bootle and I began to fall in love with that community. And actually a church leader approached me and said, why don't you start Why Kids here in Bootle? And I went, no, it's not Liverpool. And I remember going away and God saying to me, no stupid, it is Liverpool. <laughs> And so, do, do brutal people think they're in Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Do they? Um, I think yes. I think yeah, many yeah. would. Yeah. yeah. Um, certainly, they don't think they're in Southport. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Bootle, uh, many of the communities in Bootle are ranked in the bottom, well, the top one percent most deprived in the country. Yep. Um, people often talk about Tower Hamlets. Well, Bootle is actually ranked up there. And yet the community is amazing. The people are wonderful. Um, and it struck me coming from, as an outsider, and I wish I could be talk Scouse and have the accent, but I can't. Oh, it's and a little bit, I'm going to take it all It's a bit of Welsh coming through. Yeah. Um, but if um, very many people look, in the past have looked down on Liverpool as a city, um, and yet Liverpool looked down on Bootle. And I think Bootle's an amazing place and the people are amazing. And I really feel that God has a special heart for the people of Bootle. Um, so when he, he called us to set up there, it was like, yeah, great, let's go for it. Well, I, I went to, is it Savio Salesian? Yeah. Have I got to pronounce that right? School. Yes. Um, when I was working as a police chaplain, because Eileen Heaney, I don't know if you know, she was the police officer based there. Um, the police have officers in... Yes schools and I just thought what an amazing I mean in the heart of Bootle really um, you know drawing on like you said kids from uh, you know areas where the where people are struggling yeah um, but I just thought what an amazing school amazing kids uh, I had a ball there you know you, you do some scores work don't you don't yeah yeah we do we do a lot of schools work actually at white kids um, and I'm sure you can appreciate it that when you first go into a school it might feel a little bit like a jungle or a zoo you kind of you're thrown into it but the, I think the beauty of what white kids do is that actually it's about longevity it's about being there for the long term and um, working alongside kids right from being children to like even now Claire will talk about some of our staff and, and how we used to work with them why kids and that's that's brilliant but a lot of the schools that we do there's a big variety so we we run um, something called the ready to change the world and um, which is about basically empowering kids to be able to go out and try and change the world around them and become leaders in their own like community in Bootle and then there's uh, lots of other things as well we do a fancy football club and um, we do assemblies and, and all kinds but yeah and that's, that's a lot about relationship building as well and getting alongside the kids and getting to know them 
And um, um, what other things do you do with young people? Do you, do you go out onto the streets and do detached kind of work and trying to connect with them in parks? And we don't do a lot of detached work, um, but we we kind of that. that so our, I would say our detached work often is is going into the schools because. We won't always organise something either, so we're happy to go in at lunchtime and just sit with the kids and get to know them. And there's no ulterior motive. It's just let's just chat, let's just get to know you and, and see what see how we can help if 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 there's a need. Um, and again, it's the same in primary schools. There's yard play and there's getting to know them yeah. and getting alongside them. So, Sarah, where, where does the why come from in why kids? Do you know that? Or do I have to come back to Claire for that? Um, There's a test for you. It, it, it is a bit of a test, um, but I would probably say it stems from the fact that although Claire is very um, entrenched in youth work, um, you know, by her own admission, when she started youth work, it was the last thing that she wanted to do was work with children. So it's probably, why kids? Yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that close? Um, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> it, I have been asked that before. The reason was um, I read a book um, about uh, reaching and keeping children and reaching and keeping teenagers, a couple of books by Peter Briley. Um, and in that he used a, ter a term, which actually I found out later was an American term. Generation Generation y. X and Generation Y. And of course, I'm Generation X, the children coming at Generation Y. We're going to have to come back to that because we're coming to our commercial break. Afterwards, we're going to come back, eat these cakes and talk maybe a bit more about that and talk about North Perk Cafe. Join us after the break. Welcome back to Faith Matters. We've got the team from Y Kids. And before we chat to them again and eat these wonderful cakes, we've got a video. We went out and made a video at the North Perk Cafe uh, this week, so enjoy the video. See you in a few moments. Okay. Social enterprise set up by local, local children, charity white kids. The cafe itself is based in Brutal um, and it's a cafe with a conscience. Uh, we're a social enterprise, which means that uh, any profit that we make is uh, goes straight back into the community and goes into all the work that uh, white kids do uh, with children and other people in the area. So, my friend who used to work for white kids uh, saw the advertisement on Facebook and so she told me about it and I said, I'm just hoping for the best. <laughs> Uh, what we also do is we offer uh, apprenticeships uh, for young people in the area, age 16 to 24, uh, with the idea uh, of them getting experience, uh, getting paid work, uh, and they also get an MVQ level too. Um, after that, uh, we then also help them uh, to build a portfolio and we try and move them up to uh, the job that they want, uh, or that they see themselves in. Uh, and to really try and help them and uh, get them into the path in life that they want to. I actually have been working for White Kids Children Charity for about seven years now, um, as a volunteer and as staff. So it's, it's something that me and Claire, the, the CEO, we've had uh, a lot of conversations about it. Uh, she kind of told me a vision a lot and for years I'd said, oh, you know, when it happens, like, I want to be involved, I want to get on board. Um, so I was actually working uh, for someone else at the time. Um, and she approached me and said you know, she wanted to work for that. Um, and obviously, everyone wanted to, and they wanted to be a part of it. So I did. So 
since starting, um, I know you still fight with yourself, like, I've gained so much experience um, in, in a lot of it in business, in how you set up the business, and management, and managing the business as a whole, uh, you know, staffing, uh, realtors, you know, everything like that. Like, I've just got so much experience. Um, but I also get a lot out of it knowing that I'm, I'm not just working um, for helping other people. Um, you know, we have a lot of customers that come in who um, you know, say to us, oh, you, know, you make our day, you've got a smile on our face, you know. Um, and it's somewhere where they can come and relax. And we have so many uh, customers saying how pleasant the atmosphere is in here and how warm it is. Um, uh, and also, obviously, helping uh, our apprentices um, and building them up and building their confidence and, and their, their cooking skills and their barista skills. And, like, I love doing that, like, you know, teaching and uh, you know, watching them progress and get better and better. Um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Well, that video gave us a little flavour um, of the North. But cafe, no pun intended. I'm going to come straight to Sarah now, who's the manager of the cafe. Um, just tell us a little bit more about the cafe. Um, what led you to open a cafe on the Strand in Bootle? Um, again, I mean, it's been a vision of, of Claire's for, for many years to provide, um, you know, healthy food to the community, a place for targeted youth work. Um, you know, but I, I really need to hand over to Claire for her vision. Right, OK, we'll come, we'll come back to you, Sarah. Um, yeah, it, I think you said it in a nutshell, really. It, it was about, um, yes, make, giving the, the people of Bootle something of high quality, because it's not any, any sort of cafe. We wanted something that was good, high quality. At the time, there weren't, um, any, there weren't any chains. So it's not um, like a greasy spoon? No, in fact, one, one of our, uh, our big things was we don't do chips. <laughs> We occasionally do wedges, but we don't do chips. There's no deep fat fryer. Um, so everything's homemade um, and fresh. And we wanted to have more than one purpose. So it's also about employing young people uh, and giving them opportunities. And it was about help, having good, healthy food. Uh, and then hopefully uh, being able to generate an income for the charity as well. Well, I mean, you, you, you talked a lot about healthy food, but this, this uh, sample you bought today looks um, distinctly unhealthy to me. Um, shall I just... Um, I'm, I'm going to eat one while you answer the question. Um, what, why have you bought this for us today? Sarah. <laughs> well, we wanted to show that we um, have um, a wide range of, of goods. Everybody wants afternoon tea. It's quite topical at the moment. Um, what we've actually done is we have uh, trained our staff to bake. A lot of the things that you see on there are homemade. Um, we've also uh, made our own, as you can see, chocolate pizzas, um, which we've been training our staff um, to make, most certainly, most certainly. I mean, what we've actually done is we have um, employed young people from the area who perhaps have had um, left school with little or no qualifications, and they have very little chance of getting a job because of that fact. But what we've done is we've interviewed on a um, personality basis and looked at people's skills as much as the fact that they actually want to learn. So we've taken people on who have no uh, background in the hospitality industry and we've trained them to a standard where we have had people leave the cafe and get jobs as assistant managers. Really? And that's with just a year's training with, so they've had um, the experience and the qualification all at the same time from working with Y Kids in the North Perk Cafe. Yeah, that, that's really good. And you, you, you do some other things there. I mean, you're training people. Um, we do. The, the cafe is used uh, for youth work in the evenings. Um, Tim runs a, a youth alpha, as he's mentioned, but we also have um, a project called Rise, which is a, a, a youth church really so once a month we have the children come along we have a speaker we have great games you know but they're able as well to access the cafe um, in a way that the, perhaps they wouldn't be able to afford to because we drop the prices right, okay. for them to actually come and use the venue but your prices are quite 
you know, they're not high anyway, are they? Uh, and I mean, I've been there, so um, I know it's interesting because I, I went there for um, a meeting and uh, I, was re I was really surprised by how high quality it was, really. That, um, uh, not that maybe not that I should have been. Maybe I wasn't <laughs> yeah. expecting a greasy spoon. Well, 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 the whole high street is full of greasy spoons. It's full of places that you can buy, you know, chips and greasy food from. And we just felt that Bootle deserved the best, you know. Um, so we, we, we try to keep our prices as low as we can. Uh, whilst, as you know, as we keep saying, providing fresh, healthy and quality food, you know, amongst a, a failing high street. So right, okay. it's, yeah. it's And how are you received that. by your... Uh, competitors or um I think that you know that uh, yeah you know we have competition but um you know I, I feel that some of the competition isn't competition because they are you know high street chains providing food you know that arrives in packages and gets put into the yeah. microwave so there's not really it, it, it's not comparable no, shall no. we say I think um, one success of the cafe is that although we don't preach in the cafe, you know, there's very little in the cafe that says that we're a Christian cafe. However, you know, I've had people ask me if I'm a Christian and I ask them why, 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 why are you asking me? If, yes, I am. But, you know, why are you asking me if I'm a Christian? And they just go, I can tell. And I thought, how wonderful. That, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You know, and although we don't, you know, um, lay hands on people and pray for them. You know, we have had people come in and ask for prayer. Good we prayer. have regulars who come in who feel safe, they feel comfortable, you know, they feel it's somewhere that they can come and spend what would possibly all, you know, be a day without conversation or other people in their lives. So the, the cafe is success on, on many levels. Okay, did I hear you mention you did cafe church? Um, Tim, are you, is that your, your yeah, thing? Yes. Is that the same, it's not the same as you, you, Youth Alpha, obviously? No, no. So we, we actually ran Youth Alpha out of, out of Rise because we found that, um, that young people were, were kind of flooding to it. Um, and, and although we, we kind of uh, set this thing up once a month where we, um, we'll have a bit of testimony, a bit of a talk, but around that is like live music and it's a place where they can come with their friends and just chill and just enjoy like community in a way, enjoy the cafe um, and, and be part of something. You get quite, how many people do you get to come to that? So regularly between 30 to 50 a month. Brilliant. And these are often, often young people who've probably got nowhere else to go. And often as well, they've never been to church before. No. Um, and out of Alpha actually we had some interesting conversations which said that, that if, if we'd have done that the same kind of thing in a church then they might not have come thanks so much for coming on today thanks for bringing the cakes um as soon as we go off air we will be diving into these and uh we wish you all all the well with what you're doing and um there's a website isn't there where people can... there is yes why kids why great thank you thanks guys and thanks for joining us on faith matters join us next time